Thank you for viewing the training video today on the ION hand procedure room staff training. The purpose of the procedure room is to be able to provide care for patients in a controlled environment with standard equipment. You'll start by getting the patient from the waiting room in the usual manner. Next, you'll take them back to a exam room where you'll perform the check-in process. This will include name, identification, reason for visit, and any updates to their medications or their pharmacy. A consent form will be prepared that the patient should sign prior to any of the following steps. After the consent form is signed, you'll get the patient ready for their numbing injection. This will include a basic setup with a chlorhexidine prep stick and either sterile or non-sterile gloves depending on the provider. You'll also need a gauze and a band-aid in case there's any bleeding from the injection site. Each 10 milliliter syringe should be prepared with 9 ml of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine and 1 ml of sodium bicarbonate. Depending on your surgeon's preference, they may want either a 25 gauge needle or a 27 gauge needle. The provider will numb the patient's planned surgical site in a regular exam room prior to coming to the procedure room. The lidocaine with epinephrine should be given about 25 minutes to take effect before the procedure is started. After the numbing is given, the patient will be taken to the sub-waiting room, shown here, in order to wait while the lidocaine with epinephrine takes effect. The exam room may be used for other patients. Next, attention is directed to the procedure room setup. In the procedure room, there'll be a stretcher where the patient will lie on during the procedure and a back table that'll have the surgical instruments. Preparation of the back table starts with retrieving the back table cover. The back table covers are kept on the lower shelf of the cabinet. Their labeling is easy to read and understand. The back table cover is how you'll create a sterile field. Open the back table cover up and lay it out on top of the table. You'll see it has labeling indicating which is the long side and which is the short side. Orient it on the table in the same dimensions as the arrows. Next, you'll unfold part of the drape in each direction. It's helpful to have an assistant who will help you to unfold the table. You've now created a sterile working space for the rest of your instruments. The main instrument tray is opened up by pulling on the tab. As you'll peel back the outer covering, everything that's white and the brown box on the inside are all sterile. You'll want to drop that on your sterile back table. Next, you'll open up suture and various other supplies and they can be dumped on the back table in a way that preserves the sterility of the item inside. This includes the 15 blade scalpel. After all of your selected items are on the table, you'll want to get a pair of sterile gloves for yourself so that you can finish setting up the back table. The sterile gloves are kept on the top shelf of the cabinet. In order to put on your sterile gloves, you'll need a flat surface. Any surface will do. Flip open the sides of the glove package and fold them back so that they don't flop back over on the sterile gloves. Grab the glove by the cuff and tuck your hand inside. Once your sterile gloves are on, you can rearrange the back table, throw away disposable items, and open up the instrument tray in order to get everything set up. You'll want to arrange everything nicely so that it's easily accessible during the procedure. Instruments can be laid out on a green towel, and the larger, less commonly used instruments can be left in the box. Dressing supplies should be left off to the corner. Lastly, you'll want to take your gloves off and retrieve the saline that you'll pour into the bowl. 
in a similar manner as we opened other objects, the saline pour into the bowl preserves the sterility of the solution inside. Once the saline bowl has been filled up, you're finished with preparation of the back table. You can now get the patient. Have the patient come lie on the stretcher and make themselves comfortable. Next, you'll bring the wheel up hand table up to the edge of the stretcher. There's a lip that slides underneath the mattress. You may have to adjust the height of the bed to get it to slide under nicely. Once the table is slid under the mattress, lock the feet before moving on to the next step. Ensure that the patient's hand is centered in the hand, center of the hand table. Following this, you'll do the prep and drape. Standard Hibiclens and 70% alcohol are used. Two packs of gauze are sufficient for the prep. You'll fill one tub up with chlorhexidine and the other tub up with alcohol. To perform the scrub, again, put on your sterile gloves and then use the 4x4 gauze to scrub into all of the little nooks and crannies of the hand. Be sure to include in between the web spaces as well as up the forearm to the level of the elbow. The alcohol is done first to remove any dirt and oils that are on the patient's skin. Next, the chlorhexidine is used. And in a similar fashion, the fingers are scrubbed, getting in all the nooks and crannies with the soapy suds of the chlorhexidine soap. This is your final application to create a sterile surface for the procedure. After the hand has been scrubbed, the patient should hold their hand up in the air. Next, the surgeon or the PA will put the three quarters drape up underneath, and the patient can then lie their hand down on the sterile drape. Once the procedure is completed, the under drapes may be removed and thrown away. The linens should be removed and thrown in the linen bin. The patient can then be checked out using the computer on wheels that's present in the procedure room. Instruments should be wiped down of any gross debris and placed back in the brown box. The instruments will then be taken to the soiled holding room where they'll be placed in this bin to go for further decontamination and sterilization. Before doing so though, they should be sprayed down with the pre-cleaner Again, all gross debris should be wiped off of the instruments. Once sprayed down with the pre-cleaner, they're placed in the instrument bin and then recorded for sterilization services to come pick up and reprocess for their next use.